At the same time with the, the markets and crypto assets regulation, we also have the DLT pilot regime, which is basically a sandbox regime for, uh, for the tokenization or primary market issuance uh, of tokenized financial instruments. And that brings a lot of the TradFi movement and the TradFi companies into the blockchain ecosystem or DLT, Decentralized Ledger Technology Ecosystem. So those two routes uh, will bring a lot of adoption for the TradFi movement and for the big bucks, let's say, um, the traditional big bucks. With the markets and crypto assets regulation, um, I think we will see a, a level playing field across the world uh, in that sense, like we had with the, with the, the GDPR, um, the General Data Protection uh, uh, Regulation, because other countries or other jurisdictions outside of the European Union started to adopt the same rules. Uh, it's called the Brussels Effect. It's also a very good, a very good book that I would recommend. And whenever the European Union being a consumer market, primarily, uh, with uh, almost uh, 400,000 uh, or 400 million uh, consumers, everyone wants to sell. China, United States, Latin America, they want to sell their products and provide their services to the European market. So if we, if we have a, reg a good and strong regulation here, everyone will tend to adopt the same rules uh, as to be on par with the European Union. Um, so I think that um, all the sectors could, could get some of this uh, because, uh, well, not only NF NFTs are out, out of scope of, of markets and crypto assets as single, single NFTs or true non-fungible tokens because if you have collections uh, that, that could not apply, yeah. Uh, if you have like one of 10,000 or 10,000 NFTs on the same underlying, underlying asset or the same underlying right or intellectual property, that would be uh, abridged by Mika. But if you have NFTs that represent, let's say, uh, real estate that, uh, uh, or other types of industries that could take, um, take advantage of this new regulation and the clarity that it brings, I think a lot of Web2 companies, traditional Web2 companies, will tend to move to Web3 as to reach uh, a new set of uh, consumers uh, like us uh, that are more digital, digitally native uh, and then want to, uh, to understand and they, they know already how to use Web3 uh, in their daily lives.